everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. I'm glad to have you all here with me today in another Bible study um, that we're going to be doing today. Um, and I'm so glad to see you all. Bear with me one moment. I am getting everything set up here. I'm glad to have you all. Uh, I'm super happy to have you all here. It's definitely a blessing. Definitely, definitely a blessing. Um, today, we are going to talk about kindness and good intentions. As you can see there on the learning board today, um, we're going to learn about kindness and goodness and, um, and good intentions and how that equals win um, and how uh, God is right next to us um, when we're completing our kindness and our good deeds. Um, so we're going to go ahead and jump into it right away. Um, and we're going to go into Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32 says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another as God Christ forgave you. Um, very important. And um, the reason why I have on the background like a road is because kindness and good intentions lead to winning, to a great win, a grand win. Kindness and goodness takes you on a road that you would never believe exists if you weren't kind. Um, the word kind is kind of usually always exaggerated. You know, when you see it posted somewhere, be kind, kindness is better, be kind, be kind. But really, is anyone understanding the reason for being kind and how this can benefit you, anybody that you know, any human could, be, could have um, benefits from being kind and having good intentions. You will always win. You'll always come out on top. Amen. This is the truth. You'll always come out on top. I promise you. Um, before I fully get into our little sermon today, I hope that you all can see things clear on my board because from my end, it is a little bit tough to see, especially certain things on this end. Um, so I hope you all are able to see it. Um, make sure you check out my YouTube channel, Honesty RV. I am now starting to load um, my sermons from here onto there just in case anybody misses it. Luke chapter 6, verse 35, but love your enemies and do good and lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be son of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the evil. So let's break that down real quick, what it says in Luke. But love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Do not give to others and expect something in return. It doesn't work. It, if you notice karma, how karma works, it just doesn't work. When you do things for people and you expect something in return, it's not going to work out for you, point blank. Why do I know this? Because the scriptures say so. So it says expect nothing in return because your reward will be great and you will be son of the most high. So remember, who is the most high? God himself, the almighty. If we want to walk by his passes, then we have to walk in his shoes and we have to do what he would do. Just like you hear this saying all the time, what would Jesus do? What would God do? Well, these are things that he would do. And that's for being kind because he is kind, according to the scriptures, to the ungrateful and to the evil. So even the evil people receive the kindness that they don't deserve from the good Lord, but they receive it because this is how good our God is. This is how good Jesus Christ is because we forgive folks, even the folks who probably don't deserve to be forgiven, right? But in the eyes of the Lord, we're supposed to forgive them according to the command and the scriptures. So do we do what we want to do? Do we focus on our mind? No, we focus on what the Lord has to say. We focus on how he does things. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 17, a man who is kind benefits himself, but a cruel man hurts himself. So let's break that down. A man who is kind benefits himself. This is what I'm talking about here. This is where kindness and good intentions lead to this wonderful winning road that ultimately brings you to the ultimate goals that you want. It's hard to believe that right away if you're not seeing things happen the way you want it right at the moment. But trust and believe me because I have done the same myself. Kindness and good intentions lead to winning. And this is the reason why I have no enemies. I get along with everybody I come in contact with. Any state that I've lived in, I get along with everybody. I have no issues with anybody because of the same reason. 
because of the good intentions. Kindness and good intentions always equal a win-win situation. Amen. And according to the scriptures, Proverbs chapter 11, verse 17, again, a man who is kind benefits himself, but a cruel man hurts himself. How does a cruel man hurt himself? In many ways, because when you're cruel to someone else, that person is naturally going to be cruel to you. Unfortunately, not saying that two wrongs mean, you know, make a right. But if you go into a store and you choose just because you just didn't give a flying, okay, and you choose to just skip in front of the person or you choose to steal something from that person, not even thinking about it, you're being cruel. You're not being kind. You don't have good intentions and you will not win. You will lose. This is how this works. Amen. Colossians chapter three, verse 12. Put on then as God chosen, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Put on then as God's chosen ones. So if we are God's chosen ones. What does that mean? What does that mean as our responsibility? We should be holy and beloved. We should have compassionate hearts. We should be kind. We should be filled with humility. We should be filled with, filled with meekness and patience. Amen. This is what the scriptures are telling us to do. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 26 says, she opens her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. So she opens up her mouth with wisdom. That means when she opens up her mouth, he or she, he's not using any type of foul language. He's not using any type of words that could be unkind to other humans. This is what the scriptures is telling us. She opens up her mouth with wisdom and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. So even though you may say that you are kind and you have good intentions, if what comes out of your mouth is something opposite, the other person or the other human or the other animal or whatever the being may be, it's going to naturally come out of your tongue. So whatever you're saying if it's not said properly or you're not thinking about what you're saying before you're saying it, okay, you're not walking in the steps of Jesus Christ. You're not walking in the steps of kindness and good intentions. Amen. Are you looking to win if you're not walking in kindness and good intentions? No, you're looking to lose. That's the, that's the absolute answer. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse four through seven says, love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believe all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Amen. Now, to break this down for you all, if you're not sure, even though it's just as clear as day, but I'm going to clear it up even more for you. Love is patient and kind. It's so easy for us humans to say we love. Do you really love? Question yourself. And if you don't really truly love or you don't believe that you're given the true love, question yourself, open up your Bible, and God and Jesus Christ, side by side, God himself plus his son, which is the son of God, which is Jesus Christ, just so we know the difference there, and always remember the difference, Jesus Christ is the son of God, the almighty, Lord, the almighty. Amen. This is what us Christians believe in. I'm not going to touch into other religions. I have to respect other religions. But as far as Christianity is concerned, we believe that the Son of God is Jesus Christ. Amen. Love is patient and kind. We must be patient. We must be kind. Love does not envy or boast. This is one thing that I've never done all my life. And this is the reason why I could preach it like a sailor. Okay. Love does not envy. Do not be envious of others. Do not wish what others have. Do not want what others have. You will not have it. You will not obtain it. Because greed and, and, and Satan will overtake you. It'll overtake you. And it'll change your mind up. And now you think that you want what the next person has. You see what the rappers have. You have what the singers have. You see what the girls wearing nice purses. You want that. That is called envy. That's called you're envious of what others have because you don't have it. Have you ever thought about maybe you don't need that? Have you put that into consideration that enviness does not take you anywhere? Most folks who are envy and fail to think with kindness and good intentions do not win. This is the point of this conversation today, you all. Amen. Kindness and good intentions always allows you to win. 
versus if you do wrongdoing with bad intentions, you will lose. You will ultimately lose. So whether or not you lose at the moment or you lose later on, you will lose. It's no doubt about it. You will lose in one way or another because karma will eat you up. And that's according to the scriptures. So again, continuing here in first um, Corinthians chapter 13, verse seven, love does not envy or boast. If you love someone, you don't boast about it. If you love someone, you're not envious of them. Amen. You love them for who they are. You respect what they have. You respect that you don't have it. And you don't try your best to get what is not deserved to you. Everything happens for a reason. Again, Kindness plus good intentions equals win-win. It is not arrogant or rude. So kind and love, kindness doesn't fall under the category, according to the scriptures, of arrogant and rude. So if you're arrogant and you're rude, hey, listen, remember in my lives, I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. Because remember, honesty and respect is key. And respectfully, I will say unto you, if you are arrogant and rude, start to work on yourself. If you have found yourself in a position where you are rude to others and you're arrogant and you only think about yourself, it's time to change. It's time to think differently. I promise you will win. Kindness and good intentions will make you win. They'll make you win. I've proven it to myself every single day and I'm only 35. I'm still learning. And every single day with my kindness and good intentions, the people that's around me just love me. Because of that reason. Because remember who knows the truth, even when you think that you're hiding it from yourself, is the good Lord above, plus his son, Jesus Christ, which we believe in if you're Christian. Okay, amen. I respect all religions. But in this room, we believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God, point blank. It's no if, it's no ands, and no buts about it. Amen. Now, moving on to breaking down what the scripture said in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 through 7, it says, um, kindness does not insist on its own way. So when you are a kind person, you don't insist on your own way in the front of others. You take in other people's what they're feeling and you consider their feelings along the way as you all come to some sort of con um, conclusion. That means you're not arrogant and that means you're not rude about it. You're understanding because remember what the scriptures say, a wise man is going to get far. A fool man, his feet will be cut off very early, very short. Because you choose to follow foolish ways. In this room, we will be wise. And we will learn what it is to be wise. And under wise falls kindness and good intentions. Because what? Because we want to win. We don't want to lose anymore. We want to win in the eyes of the Lord. Not only in ourselves, but we also want to win in the eyes of the Lord. We want to win in the eyes of Jesus Christ, the one who gave us our commandments that we must follow. He took this from his father, which is our father too, which we must follow. If we follow these rules, we'll notice that we run into less issues. We run into less crime and problems on the street. We run into less problems with folks that we meet all over the place. Less problems, less issues. It's a proven fact. It goes on to say in the scripture, it is not irritable or resentful. So if you're irritable and you're resentful, you do not hold kindness or good intentions in your heart. Can you change that? Yes. Remember what I told you in my other lessons, God and Jesus are always taking applications. They're always taking applications. They're ready to accept anybody in at any moment, as long as you repent. As long as you repent, it says it in Revelation. As long as you repent, you'll be all right. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing. So kindness doesn't rejoice at wrongdoing. When they see somebody do something wrong, they don't say, oh, girl, I thought that was nice. Oh, yeah, man, you cool for that, man. Oh, yeah. That's not kindness or good intention. We know that. Come on. Let's not play ourselves now. But rejoice with the truth. Okay? Kindness and good intentions rejoice with the truth. Not with a lie, not with a white lie, with the truth. Amen? Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. So if you love, you bear all things, believes all things, you hope for all things and you endure all things because we are walking by Christ and we believe in the afterlife. And we know through the book of Revelations, if we don't follow these rules, we will find ourselves at the gates of hell, point blank, according to the scriptures. Again, I go back according to the scriptures. Everybody is real quick to say, oh, why believe a book? We're going back to the scriptures. What else do you have to believe in? Look at the society that we live in. 
Look at the young people around us that are dying. Children, teenagers, people are dying. People are dropping dead. Nobody's concerned about this. Nobody's concerned about where you're going after that. Well, you need to be concerned. You need to be concerned. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, whoever is generous to the poor lends to the Lord and he will repay him for his deed. So whoever is generous to the poor, same thing. Some people say, well, I'm not giving no, no money to no homeless person on the street. Why not? You got a dollar, you can go ahead and get 50 cents. Keep 50 cents. You know you can afford nothing really with that whole dollar anyway. What's wrong with giving a little bit to somebody else? Because the scripture says, the Lord, he will repay you for your deed. Now, maybe you might not get that 50 cents back the same day, right? Amen. We know that, right? Let's not be a fool now. We know you might not get that 50 cents back the same day, but your blessings will come in other manners. If you wait for it, if you're patient, if you believe, if you don't believe, you won't see the blessings, point blank. You can't expect to not believe and then see the blessings come around and say, oh, oh, well, hey, God, you know, now that you show me that you're real, I, 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 I'm going to go ahead and believe in you now. It doesn't work like that. He wants to see who believes in him without seeing him. And when you believe in him without seeing him, then you see all the blessings that he pushes down and flourishes through your life. And he runs them along that road that you drive every day. He puts that blessing through. But he's a jealous God. If you're not going to give him your all, don't give him anything at all. You're going to give him his all. Jesus Christ wants your all. He wants all of you. And then he's going to walk by you. You can't expect him to be there for you if you just want to pick up and pick up your Bible when you're ready to. You just want to pray when you feel like it. Jesus is not for that. He doesn't have time for that. He's a faithful friend. He's a faithful friend which a lot of us has la have lacked that. We have lacked that as human beings. Hey, it is what it is. We have lacked that as human beings. We barely give thanks for the breath that we're able to take every single day when we wake up. Every day we're able to, to breathe for Jesus' sake. We're able to breathe. Do we wake up and say, thank you, God, for letting me breathe today? Thank you, God, for driving me down the road safe. Thank you, God. Not all of us. I do. Was I like that before? No. No. I used to curse like a sailor. Now, I don't curse like a sailor. I watch my curse words now. I'm able to say a curse word or two and recognize it. So then the next day I get better and better and better. This is what I'm preaching here. Amen. This is what I'm saying to you all. Now, 1 John chapter 3, verse 18 says, Little children, let us not love in word or talk, but in deed and in truth. Because again, Kindness and good intentions equal win-win. You shall not lose if you're kind and you have good intentions. I promise you that. Because the Lord was this way. Our Jesus, our Savior was this way. He was a kind man, even to the evildoers, even to the folks who didn't believe in him, even to the folks who shunned him. It says it there in your book. All you got to do is pick up your Bible, 1 Matthew. 1 Matthew chapter 20, 26, you can find it right in there. This is where you can find it at. Amen. This is what we're talking about. Now, Galatians, if you're following along in your Bible, Galatians chapter six, verse 10. So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So let's break that down now for those of you who may not understand what the scripture is saying. So then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone. Yes, indeed. Must we? Yes. If you're wondering why things in your daily life are going wrong, even if you go to the store, even if you go wherever you go and you're wondering, how come the lady didn't let me go in front of her? Or well, how come this? Because you have to think with good intentions first, because the Lord is working through us, through the Holy Spirit. And if we don't believe in God and we don't believe in the son of God, which is Jesus Christ, and we don't believe in the commandments before he died on the cross for us and became crucified in first Matthews. And before he revealed himself in revelations on what we need to do, if we don't get ourselves right, we won't be ready for the afterlife. Don't fool yourself. Don't fool yourself. You won't be ready for the afterlife. What do you have to lose at this point? What are you gaining in this world so much that you wouldn't be concerned about when you're going six feet under and what's going to happen after that? Trust me, honey, I'm concerned. I'm sure you're concerned too. And I'm sure you want answers too. And these answers are in the Bible. If you read them and understand them, you will not have the doubt that some evildoers may have. Because you have a lot of evildoers that they'll tell you, oh, you need to leave Jesus alone. 
They're not thinking about the afterlife. They're thinking about the now. And it says that in the Bible. The folks who think about the now and choose the worldly life will live in the gates of hell. Whoever walks by Jesus Christ and lives by the word of Jesus Christ and learns the word of Jesus Christ and applies it to his everyday life, this person will be ready for the gates of heaven when they are open and when the Lord comes in like a thief of the night. Amen. This is what I'm talking about here. This is why it's important for kindness and good intentions in order for you to win. Aren't you tired of losing? Aren't you tired of losing? You not only lose when you have to pay your bills. You not only lose when you have to go to work and you have to deal with people that unfortunately you don't want to deal with because your heart hasn't been taught kindness and good intentions because you feel that if somebody does something wrong to you, you shall do the same. Well, in the scriptures, two wrongs don't make a right. We know that. We know that even if you didn't read the scriptures, that two wrongs don't make a right. But you have some folks where they're going to do exactly what the scriptures say. It is what it is. They're going to do exactly what the scriptures say. And it says, if you use the sword, you will die by the sword. You use the gun, you will die by the gun, in other words. So go ahead and continue your violence and your rampage, and you'll know where you end up. But if you want to make a change, God is taking applications today. If you want to make a change, Jesus Christ is taking applications today. He's always taking applications. It's free to learn his word of God. Amen. Now, first Peter chapter three, verse nine says, do not repay evil for evil or revealing for revealing. But on the contrary, blessed for two, this you were called that you may obtain blessing. Let's go ahead and <laughs> it, it's good, man. Let's go ahead and break that down. Do not repay evil for evil or reviling or reviling. Do not pay evil with evil. Two wrongs don't make a right, right? But on the contrary, what you should do, according to the scriptures, is bless. For this you were called. Remember, we're, we're God's children. And one of his children were Jesus Christ. Put this into perspective now. We have an obligation just like the son of God had unto his father. We have an obligation. And our obligation is very simple. And let me tell you, it's such a beautiful thing, our obligation. Our obligation is so deep and so beautiful that all it is is blessing and being kind. Being kind, having good intentions. Don't you want everybody to have good intentions for you too? Don't you want to go into the store and you have two items and the lady in the front of you have 10 and she say, hey, go ahead and jump in the front of me. It's okay. We're all going to get there at the same time. That's what I do. I know I'm going to get through the line anyway. I have a lot of patience when I'm out in public. Sometimes I don't have as much patience with my family that I have in public. I have so much patience in public with, with other humans. And it's okay to let that lady with two items go in front of you. Why are you rushing for? You ain't going to get it out there no more faster. Let the poor little lady go. Amen. Come on now. Thank you for your follow, Smoke. I appreciate that. And thank you all for being here and enjoying the word right now because... We need this positivity. A lot of times, uh, you know, with TikTok and Facebook and stuff, we have a habit of scrolling through. Well, not me anymore. Before I used to do it every once in a blue. I, I really don't mess with it anymore. And even though I get here on live on TikTok, I don't scroll through anything. But I make sure I follow everybody who follows me because I need to show my gratification some way or another because I do that. I want to make sure everybody knows I'm following them too. You're not just following me. I'm following you too. But I really don't scroll through the TikTok. But when I do... It always happens to be something ridiculous. And I'm not saying that everything on TikTok is ridiculous, because if not, I will be talking about myself, right? I will be saying, well, I'm ridiculous here. No, it's not that. But you know what I'm trying to say? The main point of it is that some things we need to just not see. We need some good intentions, some good vibes here on TikTok, whatever social media platform that we can use in order to spread the word of Jesus Christ. And then it also goes on and it says, so then as we have opportunity in Galatians chapter six, verse 10, so then as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone and especially to those who are of household faith. So like I said, if you meet someone that's of faith, even more reason to do good towards them because they're going to do good towards you. But either way, whether or not they're good to you or bad to you, whatever the case may be, keep your kindness in check, keep your good intentions in check and it will pay off. You will win. You will win. Even the biggest argument, argument, you can win. So even if you have problems with your husband or your wife or whatever the case may be, kindness and good intentions, you will win that conversation. You will win that fight. Why? Because you humble yourself. 
you calm down, you think with kindness, and you have good intentions. Do I want something to happen to my partner? No. Do I like to cuddle with her? Yes. Do I want to be with her the rest of my life? Yes. Did we get into an argument? Yes. Can we get over it? Yeah, there's a way to work it out. There's a way for everything. If there's a will, there's a way. So drill it in your head, smoke it, whatever you got to do, kindness and good intentions equal when. And like we say it in Jamaica, put it out of your pipe and smoke it. Okay? Put it in your pipe and smoke it. Make sure it gets to your head. Um, First Peter uh, chapter three, verses nine says, do not repay evil for evil or revealing. Well, I went through that already. I do apologize. Um, we'll jump into uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 22. Note then the kindness and the severity of God toward those who have fallen. But God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness, otherwise to will be cut off. Check that out. That's a big threat. Let me see here. Let me go ahead and read the comments. I was told there are a lot of experts on TikTok. You're right. You're right, Mr. Scotty. You're very right. You're very, very right. But in general, I was saying that, you know, some of the, the stuff that we actually see sometimes that are loaded up, sometimes you just got to say, oh God, really? You know, do we got to see that now? But Hey, everybody's each his own. You don't have to scroll through certain things. And my older daughter was telling me it does depend on what you look up as well and what a pop up in your, your feed or whatever. Um, but anyways, thank you so much for that comment, Mr. Scotty. Um, but this is a, this is a big, huge threat when it comes, um, from the Lord. It's, it's a, it's a threat, but it, it, in very, a deep way. And it's telling us note then, so note then, so pay attention and realize the kindness and the severity of God. Severity toward those who have fallen. So see how God gets upset with those who have fallen, who choose not to walk by his side, who choose not to be kind, who choose not to have good intentions. It shows here his severity towards those who have fallen in the scriptures. But God's kindness to you, to you and I, right? Because you're in here, you're learning the word, so you learn how to be kind now, right? So, but God's kindness to you, provided you continue in his kindness. So it's a tit for tat here. This is where two rights equal a right. If God is good, he expects you to be good. If he's kind, he expects you to be kind. Otherwise, you too shall be cut off. He says it right here in the scripture. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you're thinking about. I don't care where your brain at. I told you what you need to do. And what you need to do is be kind. And if you don't be kind, don't come to the gate to heaven trying to get in. I ain't got no ticket for you. This is what the Lord is saying to us. In other words, he ain't got no ticket for no evil doers. He want to know who's getting right. And even if you're 80 years old and you barely get right at 80, that's okay. Let me see your comments here. Thank you so much for the comments. I appreciate everybody's point of view. Um, Christ died to show you what happens when the officials find who you are, even when you are in honor. Amen. Thank you for that. Thank you for that, Mr. Fiance. <laughs> all right. Nice to meet you. And thank you so much. Uh, first Peter chapter four, verse eight says, above all, keep loving one another earnestly since love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. We know that, right? As long as we give love, I don't think anybody here in the room can say that we've given love to others and, and it, it be the worst thing that we did in our life. No, if anything, love will open up the doors for us. Keep loving one another earnestly and honestly, uh, since love covers a multitude of sins. Okay, it covers a multitude of sins. Amen. Acts chapter 20, verse 35. And all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus. Amen. How he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That's why I never understood why people were so mad with giving. But it's because they haven't learned the word of the Lord. And the more you give, the more you will receive. Matter of fact, you'll receive it threefold. You know it. If you're a witness, throw your hands up in there. You're a witness, right? Come on now. You'll receive it threefold. All right, Mr. Fiance says, you be right because I suffered as Jesus did. And I be kind like crazy. And he answered and ain't stopped. Amen, man. Amen. All for I ask to show me a way. All I ask for is show me a way. You're right. You're right. You're right. And once. Once he shows us the way, right? Ain't it right, fiance? Once he shows us the way, we don't never turn back. Because once you learn the word, you can't get no better than that. 
Amen. You just can't get no better than that. I'm telling you, man. You start to realize, like, wow, I should have learned this before. I should have learned this before. So as we know, amen, it's more, uh, it's, it's, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Um, now, I shall say, let me tell you, just so you all know and you're aware, let me flip to the part in our Bible, okay, that shows us why I'm here with you all right now. I'm here by commandment, and I'm going to tell you why I'm here by commandment. I'm going into it right now. This is why I'm here with commandment. Because... In Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. This is why I'm here with you all today, because God commanded me to do it. Sometimes you can't even find your own strength. God has to give you that strength. Amen, fiance. Yep. First Corinthians chapter 13, verses four says, love is patient and kind. Um, um, love is kind or love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast and it's not arrogant. Amen. That's what we're talking about today. Yep. Um, syntax, parse, grammar, be the key of knowledge cracked by David. Amen. Absolutely. So I'm glad you all are here with me today. I'm going to come back with good intentions. Um, give me about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, actually, I run a business actually after the year, which is a tax business. So of course, it's my busy time. And I always make sure that I have time for God and I check in and make sure that I can give the word and pass the word because it's not here for anything else but for the word and pass the message. Um, if you all want to check me out, come back in about 15 minutes or so. I should be back on live. And we're going to continue with kindness and good intentions um, because I do have some more important scriptures that I want to read to you all. Thank you all so much. And thank you all for being here. And God bless you all. And I'll see you all shortly. The day has not ended yet.